Hello, it's Tim from Toy Tinker Tim, and in this episode, we're taking a look at a 1977 Kenner Bionic Man action figure. And the key thing is here, he has the Bionic Grip Arm, which was the second version of the figure that was put out. This figure was a donated item uh, that was being auctioned. So the seller really had no info or understanding of it. It just was strictly being sold as is. So this is what we've got here. We're gonna look it over and see what needs to be done. So the arm mechanism on this figure is good. There's no stripped teeth in the gears. Uh, it's got a good smooth action. And the thing to remember with these figures is that the head needs to be turned to the right uh, to activate that left mechanism. And then you turn it away towards your left to release that catch to let the arm go back down again. So paint scuffs on the head are fairly common. Uh, the thing with these scuffs is that they are more than just a wear. It's actually the plastic has kind of gotten ground down on the edges, like the figure was maybe thrown across the floor. It's seen some action. So it's some uh, deep gouges in there where the hair or paint rubs are at. Get a brief look here, the bionic eye, the vision there is pretty dirty, a bit cloudy. What's kind of a nice thing here with this figure is a lot of times the rubber on these arms is dried out. It's uh, hardened on to the arm and this one is actually still flexible. So other than some body scratching and uh, maybe a bit dusty and dirty, the figure is in good condition. You know, the hands aren't nicked up and the bionic grip hand is good and tight. Uh, the mechanism is snappy and uh, it's not wobbly. Due to the age of the rubber here on the arm, I'm going to use some uh, cornstarch on there instead of talcum powder. Um, talcum is just kind of bad. It's a health issue for you, for your lungs, for respiratory. So I prefer to use cornstarch as a substitute. But the rubber with the age has gotten a little sticky and tacky. So I want to work that all over the surface before I start to try to remove that. Instead of rolling the rubber up the arm, like uh, the feature is with the action figure, you would roll it up to access the modules. I'm going to work from the large and the upper arm and slide the rubber down over the narrower because I'm afraid trying to roll up the rubber, it could cause it to split or tear.
So doing an arm comparison, we have Mascatron, the Bionic Grip arm, and the original first generation issue of the arm. The Mascatron silver plastic color is pretty much a uh, exact color of the Bionic Grip arm, silver being used there. The forearms, despite the modification for the figures, are the same dimensions. The upper arm chips are different graphics between the Bionic Grip arm and the first generation, the first edition arm. The original arm chips did remove, which turned out to be a threat for a choke hazard. Uh, the bionic grip arm module doesn't seem to remove, and I'm not going to go any farther to try to force it out and risk some sort of damage. The yellow do not remove panel, which would normally have been a chip in the first arm, uh, but that panel is the button that activates the bionic grip feature. So I've fairly disassembled the body to wash and clean it up here. I'm just going to use a soft bristle toothbrush, a little bit of Dawn dish soap on it there, and warm water. And rather than submersing the parts, I'm just really scrubbing them down and then uh, rinsing it off, drying it off with a damp towel there then.
So there's a bit of uh, dried on, stuck on rubber from the connection area of the upper arm. So a little bit of rubbing alcohol on there to uh, kind of help free that up and picking away at it. It's eventually get rid of all of that. His button in the back here uh, sticks a bit, which could be due to plastic wear, friction, dirt, or the age here. So the figures are glued together. There is no good access to the inner workings. So I'm putting just a fine drop of oil in the opening and uh, working that into the parts as best to reduce uh, plastic on plastic wear. The bionic eye that was kind of cloudy and dirty, it's a quick cleanup, it's just with a dry Q-tip. And then the view is much better. After the pieces are dry, I'm going over the plastic with the Plast-X cleaner to uh, help buff out minor scratches and uh, dullness just from oxidation. Now to address the paint wear, there's a small black fleck of plastic on the ear. Originally I thought it was just some paint or a melt mark, but it's definitely within the plastic itself. I'm also going to be touching up the eyebrows here. So to color match the hair, uh, I'm using a burnt sienna, then I'm going to use the burnt umber and raw sienna. These are all acrylic paints. And after painting, I'll use a acrylic resin satin varnish to seal the paint. And then that'll also help that blend in with the original paint of the hair since it's a dull finish. Mixing the paints is a process not to be rushed. Uh, I check my progress on the mixing 
by just holding the brush loaded with the paint next to the hair before I actually start applying it. And it can be a bit tricky because the color may shift between wet and dry paint. After the paint has dried and the sealer has been put on, here's the results. Some of the highlights that you're seeing here in the hair are coming from the lighting, but it's a pretty even match. So one of the things that's missing to the figure is the decal on the bionic grip arm there. So I've looked for photo references and uh, because I've not at, at the point of this video been able to find any uh, decals being sold uh, that would replicate the original. So I'm going to go about creating my own so with the photo reference, uh, I'm drawing it out first on tracing paper and then scanning that in and then through a program I'm adding in the color on the computer and then printing that out. And uh, after I've reduced it in size to what I can see approximating the original one, I'm spraying a finish over the printout just to seal it and then cutting it out and uh, using a spray adhesive I'll mount that onto the arm. Here's my finished mock-up of uh, the decal there on the arm. It's not the greatest thing, but it, it does a fair representation at least. And uh, maybe in the future I'll find some more accurate reproductions, but I think it turned out okay. The Mission to Mars spacesuit that the figure came with, I'll hang on to that and maybe resell it later, but I've got a uh, original red track suit for them handy. It's a spare one, so I'll put that on him, and that stays pretty true to when this figure was released. There's a lot to cover uh, going into painting the hair, but at least a process to go about recreating a decal. So it's something that can be used for all different kinds of toys or figures. So. Hope you enjoyed the episode, hit the like, be sure and hit the subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.